Good afternoon. I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive. It is Friday, May 29th, and this is our uh, 2 o'clock hour coronavirus update uh, regarding the Westchester spread. We're approaching uh, the end of the third month that uh, we have uh, been faced with the coronavirus outbreak and all of the changes that it's made in society. Uh, we're here at uh, the municipality that first saw the front edge of this contagion, the city of New Rochelle, a place where I have spent uh, many days representing both in the State Assembly and the State Senate. And years ago, as a young uh, kid from a neighboring community, spent a lot of time in New Rochelle socially. Uh, the mayor of the city, Noam Bramson, is with us here. Uh, before any of his colleagues did, uh, he had to uh, face up to organizing the city government to respond to this crisis. And he's done a magnificent job. Uh, everyone has credited him with hard work and uh, inclusive work with the city council, with people from the faith community, the businesses of New Rochelle, Chamber of Commerce, and so forth. So uh, he was gracious enough, uh, as we've been going around the county, to invite us to be with him here today. And I'd like Mayor Bramson to say a few words and just share with us some of his thoughts uh, as New Rochelle has pushed back against the coronavirus. Mayor Bramson. Thank you very much, uh, George. Um, I appreciate not only your, your kind words and your presence here in New Rochelle today, but your really remarkable leadership from the beginning of this process. So the, the very first day when we heard about a case here in Westchester, we were on the phone together, we were physically together in the county office building. And um, to know that not only you, but your entire team has been so focused on this unprecedented challenge has been a source of reassurance and guidance to, to every municipality in Westchester. So I, I thank you for it. Uh, and this is obviously um, a significant week for the entire Mid-Hudson region, but it's one that is perhaps felt even more keenly in New Rochelle. Uh, we feel a, a sense of satisfaction having come through the fire and now being able to have the beginning of the reopening process. And I'm enormously proud of what the people of this community have done in order to get us to this point. Uh, and it's about individual responsibility. Uh, making sure we're taking direction from the public health authorities, remaining physically distant, using masks whenever we can't be physically distant. It's about institutional responsibility, all of our not-for-profits and community agencies and houses of worship, uh, which have mobilized uh, resources to assist the, the most vulnerable among us. It's about the remarkable resilience of the business community, uh, which um, has been taking extraordinary hits uh, and yet remains committed to this city and to this region and now has an opportunity uh, to flourish again as we begin the process uh, of recovery, as we all together uh, demonstrate our resilience. Uh, to be clear, we're not out of the woods, uh, George, as, as you know very well. Uh, although in the original containment zone, the number of active cases is down to just about zero, which is a, a great success story. In our city as a whole, uh, we still have more than 90 active cases, uh, as we've seen throughout the country. Uh, those cases tend to be concentrated in areas with overcrowded housing as well as communities of color. Uh, and so there's an extra responsibility to make sure we're reaching out in ways that are effective uh, to those uh, who are still impacted the most. So we have to keep at it uh, because if we don't, uh, then the numbers will start moving in the wrong direction and we will backslide. But I'm confident that we will remain smart and focused and disciplined. And uh, if we approach uh, this challenge in that spirit, we'll be able to keep moving through the opening process and then our entire region will recover uh, with a sense of buoyancy and vibrancy, and we'll get back to the Westchester that we know and love. So thank you all, and thank you, George. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. And uh, Westchester County continues to uh, uh, seek to be a good partner to the city of New Rochelle. Uh, just before <clears throat> we began the update, uh, the mayor and I, uh, joined as well by uh, one of our council members, uh, we're here to distribute masks, as we've been doing around the county, to some of the major house, houses of worship uh, here in New Rochelle. And the, their pastors and leaders will make sure those mas masks are distributed to those in their congregation who need them most. And that will help us in our urban centers uh, try to reduce the spread, which is really where we are today in terms of the contagion. Slightly less than three months ago, when the first case was identified, uh, we knew that it was very contagious, but we didn't quite know how uh, you know it would play out. And now that we've seen the structure of it, uh, we have certain tools that we use in absence of having a vaccine, in absence of having an antiviral treatment, that we use social distancing, wearing of masks to reduce the spread of contagion between individuals, uh, and trying to do everything we can to um, reopen the society slowly, but 
but effectively so that we can resume the life as, as the mayor said that we've had previously. New Rochelle is particularly noteworthy because there's many construction projects here in the city that were underway. You see this, the, the cranes, construction cranes in a lot of corners downtown and outside of downtown. Many of those cranes came to a halt because of this contagion. And now with phase one being underway, we've been in phase one reopening for four days. Uh, that has opened the door for uh, construction projects, and we're now seeing those construction projects back in work. The men and women who work at those uh, locations are there. That's all very positive and helpful as part of the process. And also manufacturing. There's some light manufacturing in the city, the doors of those which have opened again, and uh, that's very helpful, we think, as well. Now, we're all anticipating going through this period of time. The, the original uh, outlay was a two-week period of time under which we would have um, uh, monitoring the same set of numbers that we've monitored over the last uh, seven weeks that have gone continually down, uh, less hospitalizations, uh, less overnight fatalities, uh, a small number of infections. And as those numbers continue to move in that area and stay in that area, we intend to move from phase one to phase two under the direction of Governor Cuomo. And uh, with those things in place, we're hopeful that phase two will bring to New Rochelle and all throughout the seven county Hudson Valley region, the opening of all retail. Right now we have curbside retail, so you can order something and then go down and pick it up at the, uh, at the retail facility. But uh, I'm told by the people that shop uh, as a form of entertainment that that's not the ideal shopping for retail. You want to go, you want to look at the products, and you want to see them for yourself and then buy. And so in phase two, that would be a complete reopening of retail in the downtown core, uh, in the various regional shopping areas that we have in this community off of Palmer Avenue and uh, off of uh, the Wacky Hill section as well as in the downtown area. So all of that would be phase two. And then also the offices would go back into uh, uh, work, the law offices, the accounting firms, all of those different professional services, the governments of our communities and school districts and so forth uh, would have their administrative offices back in under phase two. That would be originally scheduled two weeks from when we went into phase one, which would be June 9th. Governor has uh, added some uh, uh, information to us, which we're going to try to be more uh, – uh, clear on and then try to share that we have a 330 municipal call this afternoon we'll hopefully have some clarification which we'll share with our local elected officials from the towns villages and cities of the county and of course report to all of you uh, the tracker has not been updated for today so we can't give you new numbers from the numbers we had yesterday as of yesterday we had 1501 active cases in the county uh, and we had uh, registered 1357 deaths we were over 148,000 people tested for COVID, which is an easy math uh, problem. 14.8% of our total population has been tested for COVID. We're approaching the uh, 150,000 people tested mark, which would be 15% of our population. I say this every single day. It is a, a, a terrific result. Um, we want to thank uh, a number of uh, individuals today. I mentioned that we had... Uh, uh, members of the New Rochelle City Council with us uh, earlier today. We also have Councilwoman Martha Lopez who was here today. Councilwoman uh, Yadira Herbert Ramos was with us also earlier today and the other members of the council joining the mayor all in support. And the mass deliveries uh, were given to Minister Mark McLean and Bishop Mott of the Family Christian Center, uh, Sister Virginia Bryant on behalf of Dr. DeQuincy Hentz from Sensational Shallow Baptist Church in New Rochelle, Dr. Alan Paul Weaver, Jr. from Bethesda Baptist Church was with us, and Pastor Wallace Noble from the St. Catherine AME Zion Church, and they were all part of the recipients. So uh, with mass deliveries, we try to control the contagion as best as we can, get ourselves to phase two, open us up uh, to the next uh, uh, economic level. Uh, on Monday, at our 2 o'clock update, we will be introducing the leadership of our uh, countywide economic development reopening task force. That task force is not for show. It is meant to be a working group of people, and they will have sub-working groups underneath them, and their mission will be to work directly with the businesses of Westchester County who are in Phase 1, preparing to enter Phase 2, 3, and 4, help each business where they may need it to uh, qualify under what the state requirements are, make sure that uh, all of the necessary uh, uh, forms and verifications and attestations are done in a timely fashion where the county has some responsibility as we do through our Department of Health uh, to check on certain issues that, that those uh, concerns are in place so that when we hit the metric of moving into the next phase that businesses can open as quickly and as effectively as they can but also using the proper uh, social distancing, mask wearing, hand washing, hand sanitizing 
uh, protocols in place. And that group will have a lot of work to do because every business is different. <coughs> What, uh, what is needed for a hotel to come online is very different from what's needed from a large retail store to go online. Um, it, what we have in a, uh, an automotive shop uh, dealing with the public is very different from dealing with a, uh, a boutique uh, for someone to come in and buy apparel. So this committee is going to be a working committee. Uh, we have a couple of, uh, we think, very strong chairs of it. They're going to devote a lot of attention and time to this, and we hope that they will be helpful. And they will work through the various chambers of commerce. It's here in New Rochelle, where Catherine White and the New Rochelle Chamber of Commerce is a very strong, robust effort, and, and all across the county to try to have those things as well. Uh, Governor Cuomo has signed an executive order that allows a store owner to deny entrance to anyone not wearing a mask. That power now has been given to the store owner to determine, and they have to sign it, so when you're at the front uh, door to enter a store, that if it says mask wearing is, is required, then you must have a mask before entering. That power has been given to the store owner to do it. Uh, in general, masks are, are considered uh, essential apparel for when you're traveling in situations where you're going to interact with other people. And uh, since you don't necessarily know if you can always keep six foot distance, uh, we put it in our, uh, our breast pocket like a new handkerchief and it's there for us whenever we need it and uh, we can we can use this to avoid the spread. Uh, the wearing of the mask has become for some people a matter of politics. Uh, we reject that. We think this is a matter of public health. When the day comes where the contagion is behind us, we have no interest in continuing to wear the masks. They are a tool to solve a problem. The problem is the contagion of the disease. We don't want the disease to spread. We want to make sure we keep the metrics in place so we can reopen the government and reopen the society, reopen the economy. That is the purpose of wearing masks. But I feel I have to mention that because we just seem to constantly in the country being in the middle of a political debate when what we need to do is just practical-minded activities and working forward. Uh, we'll also report that we continue to make some progress on the census. If you have not filled out the census and you're watching this, uh, go to my2020census.gov, G-O-V, my2020census.gov. You can fill the census form out in less than 10 minutes and, you know, you'll be online. Westchester has 43 separate municipalities that are being checked for census uh, readiness. Eleven of them have reached the position of 70 percent of their households responding. Two of them, Croton Hudson and Lewisboro, have already exceeded the percentage of households responding from 2010. And that obviously is a good sign. Uh, the bulk of our communities are in the 50 percentile and 60 percentile range. We do have two communities that we have to push up to get up to the 50 percentile range. We have until October 30th, 31st, uh, to complete the census project. And of course, we, we're not able to, to do the door-to-door -door knocking that is an essential part of the census program uh, at this stage of the game until the, cont uh, until the contagion is behind us. But uh, using a host of other activities, the census 2020 groups in almost every community have been very active, reaching the harder to reach people and trying to get uh, compliance in each of those areas. Uh, certainly, New Rochelle is doing its fair share on the census, as are the communities around us. Our countywide percentage average is higher than the state average and higher than the national average. So we're uh, hopeful about that. But, you know, we have high expectations. We, we want to see the communities that are in the 70s reach 80 percent. No Westchester community reached 80 percent 10 years ago. We'd like to see a slew of them make that. We'd like to make sure no community is under 60 percent, which would be sort of a baseline uh, of upward mobility. And we think if we get accurately tracked, then that is going to give us the best opportunity for uh, grantsmanship to the state and the federal level, where population statistics matter, and will also uh, give the best possible representation since uh, both the city council seats, the county legislative seats, state assembly, state senate, and house of representative seats are all apportioned based on population. And those apportionment efforts will follow the census being filed. So you will see every one of those jurisdictions redoing district lines on the basis of population. So it is very important for communities of all sort to make sure that uh, they have as accurate a count of their population as is possible. Uh, we are talking obviously about the COVID response, but the census is also very much on our minds at this time. Uh, with that, I'm going to uh, stop the general presentation. Thank again the mayor uh, and members of the council who are with us for inviting us here into this chamber where I have been many times before in other positions. I'm happy to be back again uh, and uh, see if we have uh, any questions from, uh, from the press. So the first question comes from the Journal News. Any decisions made on Playland opening and Croton Gorge, and, uh, Croton Gorge Park opening this weekend? 
Croton Gorge Park will remain closed this weekend. Uh, we closed it last weekend during Memorial Day. Uh, we have had a problem in the weeks prior to that with uh, the population that comes to the park being unable to be handled uh, through both parking and volume. It's a beautiful setting, wonderful place to be, and when people know that, they would come in disproportionate size. The state has closed their access to the portion that, that the state owns, and so we have closed that for this weekend, or remain closed this weekend. Um, we will have some discussion about the length of time that we might close it. It really depends on uh, what the state is doing and if we feel we can manage it properly. But as I've said many times before, I'm not afraid to close something if I think that's what has to happen in that particular place. It's closed. Uh, we have not yet made a final decision on Playland Amusement Park. We have publicly stated that it would be closed until at least July 20th. We've also said that the uh, scheduled uh, fireworks display for July 4th will not be held and that we will also be canceling uh, fireworks displays throughout the month of July. Um, we, we realize that in order for us to maintain the opening of a facility, we have to be able to see how we can plan to socially distance. Now, we opened two beaches last weekend, Playland Beach, Croton Point Park Beach. They will be open Saturday and Sunday this weekend. We believe we've developed a format where we can socially distance. We are working right now, although we have not yet gotten to closure, on plans that would allow our uh, various pools, public pools, to be open if the state allows it. Now, the state had an across-the-board closure of all pools, public and private pools. That ban remains in effect. It can only be lifted by Governor Cuomo by his executive order action. But anticipating that he might make that decision, we want to see how we can go about the process of uh, of preparing for those pools to be open. We have five public pools. One of them, Playland Pool, was scheduled to undergo reconstruction at the end of this pool season, which would have come after the Labor Day weekend. And we're having a separate discussion to determine whether or not we're going to open it at all or just begin the reconstruction project sooner, which may be the most logical thing to do. If we do open up the pools, uh, we still have time to open them up on time, which would be the end of June when they normally would open, and they would normally stay open every day of the week through the end of the summer. Uh, but again, we have to prepare for how we'd manage it, and the governor would have to agree that uh, it was timely to be able to open it up. And that applies to private pools as well. The county's role in the private pool world is simply for the Department of Health to uh, in, uh, to inspect the pools before they open, make sure the pH in the water is correct, make sure that there's a plan for proper lifeguards and other proper equipment uh, at each pool, and then give it a sign-off to allow the private pools to open. But none of that is possible until the executive order is signed, but we are making plans now to potentially open it. The remaining, beyond the beaches, the remaining uh, elements of our park system are open. Our playgrounds are closed. The children's playgrounds in places like Ridge Road Park, Kensico Dam, um, Saxon Woods are closed because the, the playground equipment cannot be maintained in a constant sanitized fashion to protect children who are constantly touching and moving about the park. And, and it's difficult because the little kids want to have that fun of playing in a children's park. We, we've made some improvements. George's uh, Island Park up in the northern part of the county is an example of that, but we can't open it up if we can't ensure safety. And so the, the children's uh, playgrounds will be closed at these parks, but the remaining parks remain open. We have to manage Kensico, uh, the demand at Kensico Dam Plaza, the demand on the boardwalk at Playland, the demand at Ward Pound Ridge, uh, the parking issues around Cranberry Lake and North White Plains, North Town North Castle. Uh, is a bit problematic. Uh, bicycle Sundays resume on the Bronx River Parkway uh, this weekend and will continue through the month of June. They were open for three weeks. They normally close on Memorial Day weekend. We've reopened it again. Uh, we're hopeful that we'll continue to see progress and manage the Bicycle Sunday program well. Our six public golf courses are open and, and they're in use. Uh, we have lost use of both the County Center and Glen Island. Here in New Rochelle, that is a great loss. That is a very large presence, large county uh, pool, uh, pardon me, large county beach. It is the largest of our three public beaches in the county, uh, but because of the testing that's going on for COVID that the state is doing, we're, we're unable to use it for any other alternative purpose. So we're making decisions about parks as we go along. Uh, that's the update for today. Next week, if we have more broad-based announcements, we'll make them publicly at the 2 o'clock sessions that we have. Well, New York City has still 
um, you know, maintain their beaches as closed. Uh, so therefore, we're going to continue to limit our beaches to Westchester County residents. I believe once New York City opens its beaches for their residents, then we will drop the restriction of being a county resident in order to use our beaches. I think it's a very logical reality. We're concerned that uh, the New York City residents who don't have access to their own beaches, I don't, you know, begrudge the mayor of the city of New York to make decisions regarding what is his assets, but we can't have uh, people from New York City then using our assets and then making it impossible for Westchester residents to use it. There's, there's an eight to one ratio between the number of Westchester residents and the number of New York City residents. So uh, both of the beaches will be open this weekend. Uh, the experience last weekend went well. So we're opening again these two weekends. Now, last weekend weren't perfect beach weekends. I'm not sure that Saturday is going to be a perfect beach day either. You know, follow the weather report. Uh, the discussion we're now having is whether or not we're going to keep the beaches open during the midweek period of time. We have some internal discussions to see how that would happen. And if we can do that, we'll announce that next week and make a determination of when we would open it through the week. But we think after last weekend's logistical issues, we were able to open the beaches successfully. We don't think anything that happened uh, would contribute to the spread of the disease. And, and as we've done everything, we've been very slow and deliberate. We have opened things in this county that were within our authority to open. We did not keep things completely locked down. But we made subjective decisions. We closed Cro Croton Gorge. We uh, canceled the, the fireworks programs, as I've said. We canceled uh, jointly with the organizations the ethnic festivals at Kensico Dam through the middle of, Ju of July. But at the same time, we kept open bicycle Sundays. We opened the beaches. We're looking at the pools. We've kept open the golf courses. These are decisions that we're making with a practical mindedness. We're not doing this ideologically. We're not saying there's an ideology that says shut the society down or open the society up. The, the, the practical decision is based on the nature of the facility. Can we manage it? keeping social distancing in mind, and if we can do that, then obviously we want the recreational outlet for people who are otherwise unable to get that outlet, and that's how we're proceeding. So for this weekend, Croton Gorge closed, beaches open, Westchester County residents only, Bicycle Sunday back on, on track, golf courses open, nature centers, hiking trails, uh, bicycle trails open. Very good. Well, thank you for um, uh, tuning in. Uh, we'll be back uh, at 11 o'clock on uh, Monday morning with another one of our COVID conversation interviews. Uh, if you haven't seen uh, uh, the series of them, it's not necessarily must-see TV, but if, you're, if you have time to spare and you want to watch some things, uh, we're there. Half an hour interview today with Peter Lauren, who is our four-county coordinator on Indian Point. We talked about the Indian Point situation today, and of course, um, uh, each day we're trying to hold these updates in different communities in Westchester County so that we have a chance to talk with the mayors and the supervisors across the uh, across the county. And again, I want to thank Mayor Noam Bramson, members of the council, for opening up this beautiful chamber. And uh, uh, we're working together, and uh, hopefully over the next month we'll see things really open up. So thank you for watching. Stay safe this weekend. Have a nice day.